Hey guys, Mr. B here, uh, bringing you a little rate of change video. And uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the difference between uh, average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change. Plus, I got a few examples there from an old public. Um, I use this example in class to, to differentiate between uh, instantaneous rate of change and average rate of change. Instantaneous rate of change, the idea behind that, what I use, is I like to think of an apple. So, um, an average rate of change. An average rate of change is when, you know, uh, like an archer shoots an apple directly through it. So it goes right through the apple. So what ends up happening, if you notice, um, the arrow touches the apple at two points. So this is sort of an average rate of change. And I'll, maybe I'll make it on an angle just to make it look a bit fancier. So it goes through the apple at exactly two points. One here and one here. So the average rate of change actually is the slope of this arrow as it touches the two points. So the slope of this arrow as it touches the two points. Now the instantaneous rate of change is uh, an arrow that gets really close to the apple and touches it at only one point. So if that leaf wasn't there, it just touched, just skimmed the apple just like that. So it's actually only at exactly uh, one point on the apple. So the average rate of change is the slope of what we call the secant line. So the secant line touches two points. And the instantaneous rate of change is the slope of the tangent, which touches exactly one point. So that's the big difference between uh, A rock and I rock. A rock is between two points, I rock is just exa at exactly one point, instantaneous, exactly at that moment. Alrighty, so let's uh, let's see what that looks like in terms of on a graph. So I rock on a graph, it's going to look very similar to what I just showed you. So uh, touches two points, so it could be touching uh, these two points just like that. Could be touching uh, two points across like this. Could be at any two points on the graph, so it could go anywhere along here. Uh, but again, it's the slope of this line. That's all uh, rate of change is. It's the slope of a of a of a line. Alrighty, so let's have a look and see what IROC is on a graph. And IROC would be touch exactly one point. Now it's harder to draw IROC, but that's what it will look like. At touching that graph at exactly one point. So uh, you might be thinking, um, what happens if you have a negative slope? So a negative slope would look like this. If you have a negative slope, then you have a negative IROC. So again, negative slope, negative IROC, or negative AROC. Your rate, your rate of change is going to be negative, so I'll draw a negative IROC. So in terms of slope, uh, when will slope be zero? So you're probably thinking when the line is straight across like this. So for a quadratic like we have here, a U-shaped parabola, the only time the rate of change is going to be zero is directly at the vertex, like this, for an instantaneous rate of change. For a rock is when uh, the y values are equal. So Anytime the graph goes along like this, the y values are equal. So, uh, like here, uh, negative 2, 0, and 0, 0. So, that would be an average rate of change of 0. All right, so that's something you got to keep in mind, and I'll show you a multiple choice here in a second, uh, an example like that. So, uh, the rate of change, what rate of change is represented by the graph provided? So, two things we got to look for slope. And is it tangent or secant? Two points or one point? So two points. So let's let's say, folks, uh, slope positive or negative, and two points or one point. So um, the line goes up like this. So that is in fact a positive slope. So we can rule out negative. A negative right here and it touches exactly one point so that leads us to positive instantaneous rate of change so if it was two points we were looking at average rate of change like anywhere along here that would be average a negative average but um, what we have is positive and exactly one point really good question guys you might expect something like that on your public and that's you know in the scale of things that we've done this year that's pretty easy just a matter of knowing what the stuff means. 
All right, here's another example I pulled off an old public. Um, the table below shows the height in meters of a tree as it grows over time in months. Uh, what is the average rate of change in meters per month between months one and three? Well, here is months one to three. So basically what we're looking for is the, the average rate of change between those months. And when we're given the points, you know, we can do a couple of things. I guess we can use the points and find the slope. So between one and three. So here are two points. So let's try this. First point, second point. So uh, we have to find the average rate of change, which is equal to the slope using those points. So you remember slope is going to be um, y2 minus y1 over x2. So let me write that out. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now in this case we don't have x and y, but x is months and y is height. So it's going to be 1.54 minus 0 0.22 divided by, and we're looking at month 3 and 1. So we have, let's see, 1.54 subtract 0 0.22, and that's equal to 1.32. Get rid of that. And then that's divided by 1 subtract 3 is 2. So when we do the math on that, we end up with 0 decimal 66. So A being our answer. So again, this is just an example of you have to know that A rock is the slope. And all you have to do is use the slope formula and the two points that you're given, this point and this point. If it's in between months 2 and 4, you use that point and that point. 1 and 4, this point and that point. So fairly straightforward, guys. You know how to do slope. All right, so let's take a look at a long answer question on a public exam. This is another ex example I pulled from an old public. Um, the power, P, in watts supplied to a, a circuit by a 9-volt battery is given by the formula here. So don't get confused by all the stuff that's going on here. You have a formula. This is it. It's a quadratic formula, or a quadratic equation, sorry. Um, so, I mean, it's nothing, it's nothing too fancy. Calculate the approximate instantaneous rate of change in the power with a current of 5 amperes. So that means uh, I is equal to 5. So what we need to do when we're calculating instantaneous rate of change, we need to pick a point that's extremely close to this one. We don't actually calculate the instantaneous rate of change. We only do A rock. And A rock, we usually have two points. Now, with instantaneous rate of change, since normally it would focus on one point, uh, what we do is we have our point 5, so we're going to find the power when amps are 5, but then we're going to pick a point that's extremely close to 5. So it gives us um, it's basically an uh, average rate of change over a very, very small interval. So we're going to pick this guy, 5.01. And then all I'm going to do is sub in my points, just like this. 5 squared, and then 9 times 5.01 minus 0 0.5, 5.01 squared. Uh, now some, some people when they do this calculation, instead of using 5, they'd use 4.99 and 5.01. I don't do that because I don't really think it makes a big difference. And to be honest guys, that this method is kind of, uh, it's not the greatest method because again, it's only approximating the instantaneous rate of change. So I'll show you actually before I uh, end this video how you can get the exact rate of change. And for 3205 students, it's actually going to be uh, very useful for you. And some of you guys have already showed. And it's basically using the power rule. I'm just calculating this now. So the only thing you guys got to be ca careful when you're doing this is again, you got to make sure you use order of operations. So take your time and make sure you do your squares first. So you get numbers that are pretty close to each other. So I got that. So I did this first. So I got to do 5 squared, then times that. All right, so uh, take your time when you're doing that. Now, what we have here is basically two points. We have 5 and 32.5 and 5.01 and 32.54. 
So these are our two points that we're going to use slope on. So we go slope is equal to, and then this is uh, what we have here. So we have 32.54, subtract 32.5. doesn't matter what points go in order as long as you're consistent. You start with this one, this one, these two numbers always go first. It doesn't matter again. I usually try to work it so I don't have to deal with negatives. And I'm just calculating this here, guys, now. So we end up with a slope of 4. So now we're going to look at the units. So units with this one are a little bit more complicated. So uh, the power watts. So it looks like it's going to be watts per amp. And I should have really wrote in watts here, W. Watts per amp. All right, so that's, that's how you do that, basically. Um, so again, instantaneous rate of change, we're just approximating by using a rock. We pick a point, and a point extremely close, sub it into the formula. We got two points, we use the slope. Now for 3205, or 3205 students who are doing 3207, we can actually use the power rule to differentiate this guy. So find P prime. So the power rule for this guy is going to be uh, differentiate that. So that's just going to be uh, 9, and then that's just going to be I. So this is actually the, the um, using the power rule, if you remember, you subtract one off, then take your exponent that you have here, multiply by the coefficient. Um, that's is your uh, derivative of, of P, so P prime. And what this gives you is a slope of the tangent line at any single point along the graph. So if you look here, 9 minus 5 is 4. So 9 minus 5 is equal to 4. So that actually gives us our rate of change right here that we got so it verifies our answer so again feel free to use this on your com on your public exam just make sure that you have something that's easy to differentiate and again you gotta be careful with that because we only know the power rule in 3207 maybe a definition derivative but be careful power rule works on a very limited number of cases so be uh, just make sure that uh, you're confident that you differentiated it correctly might be better just to check with that but again, if you're confident, feel free to use it. All right, guys. Um, hopefully, uh, you get a lot out of this video. I know uh, ready to change a very short unit. So just study your notes and do the examples that I gave you. And I'll see you in class.